Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, I'm Pastor James. I'm so glad you're watching this video today, and I pray it blesses your heart. I believe it will. I have so much I want to say. I'm so excited. Uh, last year, at this time, our churches were closed. All across the nation, churches had closed their doors. COVID had been, um, I guess, starting up in full force, and states were trying to deal with it. And uh, the nation, again, there was no vaccine and just a lot of uncertainty. And a lot of places began closing their doors and restricting attendance. And unfortunately, our church has closed our doors as well. But I wanna tell you, praise the Lord, this Sunday our church doors are open and uh, people are gonna be gathering in the name of Jesus and we're gonna say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I pray that this message touches your heart as well. And if you're watching this video, or if you know someone who hasn't gotten back in church, there are many that have fallen out, and I'll use this word just as generous as I can, they've fallen out of the discipline or the habit of attending church. They've gotten used to just sleeping in or just watching a video for a couple of minutes and then calling that a day. Let me uh, say, if that's you, come on back. Come back to the Lord's house, come back to God's people and worship with us. And if you know somebody in your family or you know somebody that used to attend church that has kind of fallen to the side, encourage them to get back into attendance, get back into um, gathering together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have your Bible, if not, run and grab it real quick. You can pause the video. And while you're pausing it, click on the share button and share this message to anyone on your friends list that may be needing a, a good word today. But it's from Matthew 21. And it's uh, verse, the first 11 verses. And I can promise you this reading, this at least is one thing you'll know for sure. That was God's word. After that, it's just going to be me speaking about it. And I hope I hit the mark. But uh, at least this part is the word of God. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied a colt with her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks anything to, if anyone says anything to you, uh, you shall say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what the, was spoken by the prophet saying, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, on a foal of a beast of burden. And the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them uh, and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut down branches from trees and spread them on the road. And the crowd that went before him and that followed him were shouting. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth of Galilee. Hallelujah. There we have it. What we call the triumphant entry, Palm Sunday. Not just palm branches, but I believe their hands were in the, hand, in the air too, saying, um, Hosanna. This wonderful thing that Jesus brings salvation. And we're looking at Palm Sunday today. And if I were to ask you, why do we call this the triumphant entry? What might your response be? Now, many times we, we look ahead, like a, like a person who's read a mystery and has gone ahead to the last chapter and found out, who the culprit or the, or, the, or the villain is. And then we go back to an earlier chapter and we use that kind of knowledge to inform our reading of the chapter. And uh, it's not really genuine in the sense of reading it without having that knowledge. So sometimes when we look at triumphant entry, we want to go ahead and fill in the idea that, oh, it's triumphant because he beat the devil. He, he's going to take away our sins. He's, and all that's true. But there's something a little, a little bit, I guess, closer to home or a little bit. You've heard of the motorcycle called a Triumph. It's, it has nothing to do with winning. I guess it is winning or being triumphant. 
but it's also just a noun. It's a motorcycle, a triumph. And Jesus' entry in the city is from a Roman uh, designation, a triumphus. It means that when a emperor like Pompey in, 19, in, in AD 61, the Senate granted him a, a triumphant entry, he could come into the city of Rome with his legions, 5,000 Roman uh, centurions. He could be allowed to bring them into the city and he would come riding in in his power and victory with all the pomp and ceremony with his regalia on, with his uh, toga and a crown. And, and uh, the people would be like a, a parade, like you would see at Macy's Day Parade uh, during Thanksgiving or maybe in World War II when uh, the confetti was coming down from the skyscrapers as uh, maybe a president's riding through or maybe uh, uh, one of our generals. In the same aspect, and that is kind of a throwback to those types of celebrations, a triumph. It was because that general, whether it be Pompey or whether it be uh, one of the other emperors, they would come in because they had won a major victory out in the field against another foreign uh, adversary. And they would come in and they called it a triumph. And it was all the fanfare that you could possibly muster. And Jesus is also coming in in a triumph. Now, yes, he is triumphant. And yes, he will beat the devil. And yes, he will make hell um, run for the hills, so to speak. He will give us victory over sin and wash away all our sins by his blood on Calvary. And this points to that, but it also is a kind of, you could say, a mock version, or almost, if you didn't know better, you might think it's like a kid's version of a triumphant entry, whereas maybe the, or a small budget version, maybe where you would see one where they had all these white stallions and horses and soldiers here, the budget wasn't as big. But Jesus designed it that way, because Jesus is a prophet and a savior of the people. And we're going to see some of the similarities. And I'm sure there are wonderful books. And I would encourage you, if you have a chance, even right now, write down Triumphant, maybe even Roman Triumphant, and contrast to Jesus. You may see that there are a lot of parallels with what Jesus does. First of all, Jesus wasn't a military leader, not in the traditional sense. He hadn't won any uh, great ranks. He wasn't a commander or a general or even a centurion, so to speak, uh, any type of rank. Um, when it comes to victory, maybe by the world standards, we wouldn't recognize him. There's no, uh, there's no uh, medals on his shoulder. There's no uh, rank on his shoulders. There's no uh, medal showing what victories he's had or what campaigns he's been in or whether he's been overseas or which skirmishes or fights he's been in. None of those types of things. He hadn't fought any armies in the sense of what the world would recognize. Though he did fight with the devil, if you recall, in the wilderness. And though he, he fought against the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he, he fought against those that would abuse the people of God. He fought against the wolves and the, the beasts that would want to tear the sheep apart. He was a fighter. He was a, a general of sorts, but not in the way the world would want us to think. And sometimes we have to put on our spiritual eyes to see really the majesty that's in Jesus Christ. And um, he wasn't even a Roman citizen. He was a Jew. So far different was our Savior from what we would see in the contrast of what we call a, a Roman um, general or even a Caesar, a ruler. The contrasts are this, that first uh, the general would come in with these white horses, usually four or five of them, pulling a chariot. And he would be wearing a garland and people would be throwing garlands out in front of him. And along the side there would be thousands upon thousands of soldiers uh, marking the way and blocking the crowd back, keeping the people at a distance as he's kind of following a road made by on the left and right hand side of his soldiers and their shields, you know, those big Roman shields that they would hold and standing at attention in their helmets and everything looking all shiny and new. And of course, him riding those, those white horses uh, in triumph, you know, like you, like you would think of the motorcycle, riding these white horses for him, pulling this 
chariot with all the with all the uh, just the majesty of it the trumpets blaring and uh, of course the people kept at a distance and garlands being thrown out and and just all that but yet what Jesus does is nothing like that there's no crown of victory on his head but rather he comes in simplicity he comes riding on as it says here in Matthew on a donkey on a colt a foal of a donkey he brings peace with him and instead of the people being kept at bay and this is a wonderful thing and I hope you see the beauty of this you remember when Jesus let the little children come to him he said suffer not the children to come to me our Savior is precious and he sees us as precious and he doesn't try to keep the people back even those that push through the crowd he acknowledges them the widow with the issue of blood if she could just touch the hem of his garment and though many are pushing against him he he recognizes he identifies the need and the power that goes out from him I want you to know that Jesus sees you and though that there might be those that want to push you back tell you to be quiet like Zacchaeus or the one shouting Jesus son of David have mercy on me the lepers and they tell him to be quiet Jesus don't have time for you almost like a like a Roman general he doesn't have time for the small people it's all about himself it's all about his own glory it's all about his own prestige it's all about his own triumph Jesus sees the people he's a savior of the people and so it's the people that come in and they throw their cloaks not garlands not things that you would generally recognize but their cloaks and they break off the most simple of things a branch from a tree how simple can you get there's no crafting no projects no going to the store buying your best I mean think about when you go to a wedding for a friend or you go to a, a birthday party or even Christmas how you spend so much time looking in the inter, on the internet looking to stores for the perfect gift but for Jesus branches what we're wearing Jesus takes us as we are and what we have around us and it's such a message to you and I even today that Jesus triumph can be in our heart and that he would just simply take us and we takes our cloaks and he takes our praises our branches we offer it to him and he comes in peace not in conquering but in peace and this beginning of the triumphant entry begins what we call the passion week the, the the week prior to his execution marked by good friday and then the following resurrection sunday this is going to be a week of jesus turning the tables over um, chasing people out of the temple uh, saying that's going to be a house of that the Lord's house is a house of prayer not a house of merchants or a den of thieves it's going to be that that uh, upper room uh, time with his disciples that betrayal of Judas the forsaking of the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane the then the false uh, trial that has taken place in the night and then finally his beating and scourging but this is his triumph now and what is his triumph yes it is a triumph at the cross but ultimately who is the enemy and this is how I would like to take this message and how we can apply it to our lives how we live our faith out in this world Jesus never saw humanity as his enemy even though they desperately tried to kill him even though we did kill him from the cross he said father forgive them they know not what they do the scriptures tell us that we do not battle against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities and rulers in the, of the air and darkness the scriptures tell us that it's those places of wickedness that are at odds with us and it's those authorities that Jesus took down I would say that when we disagree with somebody and there is so much anger right now in this world there is so much anger on the internet so much anger on Facebook and Twitter and everyone just being mad at one another because you didn't vote the way I wanted you to vote you don't like the shows I want you to like you supported this actor or this movie or didn't support it you must be hateful or you know all these name calling that goes on 
let us as God's people not be wrapped up into this. Let us see the people as Jesus saw people, not as their enemy, but sometimes, yes, even blinded by the power of this age, by the principalities and powers of darkness, by Satan himself. And let us understand that our, our fight is not against that, that those are people created in God's own image, and let us pray for them. Let us come on a donkey, not on a horse, ready to ride them down and trample upon them with our rightness and our self-righteousness. But rather, let us come in humility. Let us come with gentleness. Let us pray for them. And let us show them Jesus Christ. Let us not try to defend ourselves why we're right. But rather, let us point to them, to the righteous one, Jesus Christ. We live in very harrowing times right now, times where uh, people don't have patience with one another. But if Christ has come into our life, if we've accepted him as our savior, let that gentle Jesus be our guide to minister to the lost. There will be a day, you can turn in your Bible to the book of Revelation, on that day, Jesus is going to come. There's going to be a shout with the, with the voice of the archangel. And he's going to be coming back. And it says in that passage that he's riding on a white horse and an army behind him. And his tongue is like a sword. And his name is faithful and true. But until that day, let us not stamp down and tread upon our brothers and sisters who do not know Jesus Christ, or even those that have come to conversion, but yet don't fully know what it is to, to walk in the faith. Let us be gentle. Let us show them Jesus Christ. And may we see that he was a, I don't know how to say it. He was a prophet for the people, a savior for the people. So if we wanna follow Jesus, we have to also be for the people because our Lord and commander is for the people. And if you're watching this video right now and you don't know if God loves you, let me tell you categorically, he loves you. Let me tell you, hands down, the Savior longs to draw you to himself. So if you don't know Jesus Christ, call upon him. He loves you. I hope this Palm Sunday, this Sunday of we celebrate the triumph, the Roman word triumph, the triumph of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem as he goes to the temple and he begins to work through this path. I hope this upcoming week you grab your Bible, start with Matthew 21 there and begin to read each day and see what this week unfolds or brings to you concerning the life of our dear Savior. And may the grace of God be with you. May he touch you. And may he ride in triumph into your heart. Amen.